Hello. The architecture of our medieval cathedrals embraces four basic styles, and with rebuilding, extensions, repairs and restoration, they often reflect elements of different styles. Recognising these features helps unpick various building phases and provides clues to their chronology. Those four basic architectural styles are in sequence Norman Romanesque, Early Gothic, sometimes called Early English, but it was French, not a vernacular style, Decorated Gothic and Perpendicular Gothic, which is English in origin. Dates for these architectural periods are approximate, broad guidelines rather than hard and fast. Styles overlap as new developments emerge and are gradually more widely adopted in phases known as transitional. Norman Romanesque appears in England around 1050. It predates the Norman Conquest. Before becoming king in 1042, Edward the Confessor had spent much of his life in exile in Normandy and his Westminster Abbey, built between 1050 and 1065, introduced Romanesque church architecture to England. Its design was closely modelled on the Abbey Church at Jumiège in Normandy. Edward appointed Robert, the abbot of Jumiège, as Bishop of London in 1044. A close advisor to the king, Robert went on to become Archbishop of Canterbury in 1051. Norman Romanesque is the predominant style until around 1190. Characteristic features include massive walls, semicircular, single-centred arches, circular piers with scallop or waterleaf capitals, simple semicircular barrel or tunnel vaults, essentially made up of an extended arch, and decorations such as chevrons and lozenges, beak heads and billets. We looked at these ornaments in part 19 of our series Exploring Parish Churches. Early Gothic architecture emerges around 1190 and remains the principal style until around about 1250. The most important development in engineering terms was the replacement of semicircular, single-centred arches with two-centred pointed arches that transferred weight more efficiently, allowing buildings to be higher, with slimmer pillars, some with clustered columns or shaped profiles. In the tunnel vaults of Norman Romanesque, each masonry block is load-bearing. Two centred ribs supporting the roof space in between enabled vaults to be open in more than one direction. The first use of rib vaults in England and probably in Europe was at Durham, the first English cathedral to have a stone roof, one of several innovations introduced at Durham and a good example of a transitional architectural phase. Other significant developments of the early Gothic style include flying buttresses conveying lateral force on upper walls to the ground, the lancet window, spires and ornamentation such as crockets, these are at Ely Cathedral, and stylized stiff leaf carving, this capital is in Hereford Cathedral, and the descriptively named dog tooth and nail head decoration. Decorated Gothic takes over around 1250 and lasts until around about 1350. The arrival of the Black Death and its impact makes that end date rather more precise. The plague epidemic constrained building projects and perhaps in the aftermath, as well as a shortage of skills and labour, a lighter, plainer, airier style was thought more appropriate. Decorated Gothic was characterised by rich, dramatic surface treatments, ever more elaborate crockets, ball flower ornament, naturalistic carving and definitive window tracery that developed during the period from simple plate and geometrical bar tracery via Y and intersecting Y shapes to complex reticulated and flamboyant curvilinear tracery as in this window in the Lady Chapel at Wells. Perpendicular Gothic, the first truly English architectural style, takes us from around 1350 to the end of the medieval period and beyond into the Tudor age, around 1540. Four-centred, flatter arches appear, 
Larger windows have panel tracery with vertical mullions. The east window at Gloucester, which became a cathedral after the Reformation, is an early example. Clear stories were added, flatter profile roofs were concealed behind battlements, and fan vaulting was introduced, along with the hammer beam roof, allowing wider spaces to be spanned. The architectural secrets of how our medieval cathedrals are constructed tend to be hidden, up in the roof spaces and above the vaults. Some cathedrals offer guided behind the scenes tours. The octagonal timber lantern at Ely with its starburst effect appears to be suspended in mid-air. The construction logic is only apparent from behind, where a 450 ton skeleton of massive oak beams is revealed. We know the names of very few master masons or master carpenters from the medieval period, but we do know the man behind the lantern at Ely was master carpenter William Hurley, probably realising the design vision of Alan of Walsingham, the cathedral sacrist, who played a key role in the building of Ely Cathedral, sourcing materials and ensuring they arrived on site as they were needed. Master stonemason Elias of Deerham was appointed as a canon at Salisbury in 1220, specifically to oversee the construction of a new cathedral. And we'll take a look at Salisbury next time. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.